Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Josh's Car Corner. It's another beautiful night in August here in Wisconsin, and uh, it's been a while since I've done a new video, so I thought what I'd do is make a video about how the suspension works on the GTO and all cars in general. See, if you're like me and you've played car racing games like Gran Turismo or Forza, you can get into the really advanced sections of the game where you can start customizing your car and setting it up to perform better. Now, if you get like a race car in one of those games, it's usually pretty set up and you don't have to change much to make it drive well. But if you start taking a street car and you start modifying it to do more aggressive things with it and go faster, you can start getting into buying customized suspensions and things are fully adjustable. And you look at all these terms and what all those numbers mean, and most people have no idea what's going on with that. So I thought I'd try to shine some light on that situation and give you some ideas about how a suspension works how all the pieces work in conjunction with each other and what the terms all mean so you can understand better how the suspension works on your own car and if you decide to start making changes and upgrading the suspension you can have an idea of where you should look and the things you need to modify to make your car handle properly and safely. So let me get the car up on jack stands here and uh, we'll take a look. Oh, by the way, a big safety point when it comes to putting your car up on jack stands. When you put your car up, you want to make sure that the fingers on the jack stand are turned 90 degrees from each other on adjacent corners. So on this corner, they're pointing left and right. On the opposite corner of the car, I have them pointing front and back. And the reason for that is if something were to come along and to push on the car uh, with enough force, in theory, it could all fall over the same direction because the fingers are all pointing the same way, but turning them 90 degrees on adjacent corners resists that wanting to happen and makes the car just a little bit more stable. And I do the same thing on the rear. So if this corner is left and right, that back corner over there is fore and aft. Okay, now getting on to the suspension. When it comes to suspensions, there's three main terms that you wanna know. There's camber, caster, and toe. Now you might know what some of these terms mean already, but I'm gonna go over all of them just for novices. When you look at a tire, you would think it sits perfectly flat on the road, but in most cases it doesn't. What actually happens is the tires are tilted a little bit inward by default from the factory. That's called camber. A zero camber would be a tire that sits just perfectly straight like this. Most cars from the factory have a little bit of camber built into them to tilt the tire in. And the reason you wanna do this is because when you go into a corner and you put cornering forces on a tire, the tire naturally wants to roll over on itself. And tipping the tire in a little bit like this resists that happening because when a tire starts to roll over on itself, it puts all the weight on the outside edge of the tread. So by tipping it in a little, you're starting with more pressure to the inside edge. So when the tire does start to roll, the balance of pressure moves more toward the center and you're using more of your contact patch. So from the factory front and rear, they do dial a little, a little bit of the camber in. And when the suspension actually moves up and down, most suspensions are designed to actually increase that camber to help counteract those natural forces that occur in the tire. So the higher up the suspension goes, the more the tire tilts in to help counteract that natural force of the tire trying to roll over on itself. So that is camber. Now caster is basically the position of the wheel inside the wheel well forward and backward or fore and aft. That's what I'm gonna say. So as you look at the suspension on my car, you can see right here that the strut assembly is not perfectly vertical up and down. It's actually tipped forward a little bit. So that's what's called positive caster because the bottom of the strut assembly is farther forward than the top. And caster is just like it sounds. Imagine a caster wheel on a shopping cart. If it's flipped backwards when you're rolling, the wheels fore and back are closer together and it actually makes the cart a little less stable because the wheels are closer together. If you could run a shopping cart where those wheels were turned outward all the time, you have a much more stable platform because the wheelbase is longer. The same thing's happening here. When you add caster, you move the wheel forward in the wheel well. I have adjustable radius rod bushings and the radius rod, I don't know if you can see it, is this bar 
right here. It goes up to the core support up in front on the subframe and it attaches on the bottom of the strut assembly here. And that is a special bushing where you can take washers and you can stack them on either side of the washer to move the position of that rod forward and backward. And what that does is it moves the whole strut assembly forward and backwards. So factory has about eight degrees of caster. I'm running pretty close to nine degrees of caster. The advantage of increasing your caster is that it improves straight line stability, but it also does slightly reduce how fast your, your wheels turn and it increase and actually slow, lowers your steering rack ratio a little bit. You won't really notice, but it does make a change. And the last one I'm going to mention is toe. Toe is basically the straight line position of the wheel. Now you would think that on the car, if you had the steering wheel perfectly straight, all four wheels are in a nice straight line aiming right down the road. Not so. They actually build in sometimes from the factory a little bit of either positive or negative toe, depending on the car, depending on the suspension setup, depending on the tires. And toe is basically the starting position, assuming everything is straight on the steering wheel of the tire, outwards or inwards. Now, typically, dialing in toe increases the stability of the car. So moving the front of the wheel inward, it increases stability because it makes the car less susceptible to bouncing around and juddering around on the roads. The downside is if you put in too much, it's going to start wearing the tires a lot faster because the tire wants to go down the road straight and it's being forced to turn in all the time, which is just going to wear out the tread. So they dial in a little bit, but not too much. And when you have to start considering is when your suspension moves. So say I've got the tire towed in. So the front of it's farther forward, farther inside than the back of it. When the suspension moves up, remember this rod right here for the steering is fixed. It doesn't change length. So when the whole suspension moves up, this pivot point moves farther away. So that's one of the other reasons they dial in a little bit of tow when they set up suspensions. So when the suspension compresses and the wheel goes up, it actually goes a little bit back toward straight. So all those little things figure in again. And also adding caster, again, changes this length. It's gonna tow your wheel slightly out. So the front of it's gonna be farther out than the back of it. Then you have to go to the alignment shop and they can turn that and they can bring that all back in line. That's one of the things they do when they do alignments on a car is they adjust the tow and then they have minor things they can do to adjust camber and caster. Not too much. Most cars don't have built into them adjustments for camber and caster. Mainly it's just for tow. You can add things to the car to have the ability to adjust camber and caster. And if you ever want to get into serious track days or hardcore driving, then those are things you're going to want. Because the factory settings are great for driving down the road in a straight line, but they're not the best settings in the world for performance driving, especially autocrossing or on a road course. When it comes to modifying your suspension, putting on stiffer springs, uh, coilover sets, lowering the car especially, all these little things come into effect and you really need to take that into consideration when you start making changes. So those are things you want to consider. Now we'll move around to the back where I'll show you how the suspension works back there. Now the rear suspension on the GTO is a lot more simplistic to the front suspension. In the front suspension you've got control arms and radius rods and your strut. However, this is a lot less complex. This has got what's called a semi-trailing arm suspension. See on a rear suspension, your trailing arm, if you had one, would go from your hub assembly up to a point somewhere under the car here uh, to connect to keep the wheel from moving forward and backward. Now on this, it's got semi-trailing arm. You have this giant bar, it's kind of Y-shaped, and then it comes to meet the hub. And it's got two mounting points up front, which is kind of like what a trailing arm would do. But because it bends around, it's also controlling the side to side motion too, and it's doing all of the work. Because of that, there's very limited suspension adjustment you can make to the car. Now it's designed when it moves up and down, just like the front suspension in that it's got camber built into how it rotates. So as it goes up, it's designed to camber the wheel in. However, that's about the only suspension adjustment the suspension traveling can make on its own. There is what's called a tow rod on the back of here, and the idea is there not so much to alter the tow, just to maintain a consistent tow number. So the tow bar is there basically just to kind of maintain it and keep it traveling down the road in a straight line. Now the one of the problems on the GTO is that these factory tow rods are pretty weak. 
guys who put a decent amount of power down uh, and go to the drag strip have been known to bend these things because the tire wants to move so much and that tow rod just is not strong enough to take the torque and it'll end up just bending. So stronger tow rods are out there um, and they have adjustment built into them so you can adjust your tow. The factory one does too but most of them tend to rust up and they can't be loosened and adjusted uh, and they're pretty much junk anyway. So if you're looking for drag racing and you're making big power and you want to keep your tire nice and straight in there and not have anything bend you do want to upgrade to heavier duty tow rods. Now, one of the things you can do in the rear suspension of the GTO is you can get different bushings for where the trailing arm mounts to the rear subframe. The factory ones are rubber and they're pretty much junk. You can get polyurethane ones from Petters or from other companies that just give you a stiffer bushing in there that's gonna be a lot less susceptible to flexing back and forth. Petters also makes a cool bushing the hole in the bushing is not quite in the middle. And the idea is you get this giant wrench and while it's installed in the car, you can turn that bushing around it. And by doing that, it moves the outside position of the trailing arm. And you can actually change the default camber setting by doing that. So if you move it so the hole is pointing down or more downward than anything, it moves the arm up, increases the camber. If you put it up, it reduces it. When you start adjusting height, you change the camber, the default camber setting when you're just driving down the road. So you have to account for that. So if you really lower your car, like say more than an inch, then you're gonna change that camber so much that you're going to start unevenly wearing your tires. You're gonna put all, you're gonna put the load center on the tire from in the middle position to the inside. The inside's gonna wear out a lot faster. So you have to account for that. So in a situation like that, you need the Petters polyurethane bushings so you can dial out the camber that gets added by lowering the car. Now for me, I want to get them because for track duty, I would like to be able to go to the track, dial up the camber and have more camber built in so I can use my tires more effectively when I'm at the track and then when I'm done, just dial it right back out. I should also probably talk about how shocks work. The ones that come on the GTO from the factory or most GM cars are oil filled and it's just designed for long life and just a very soft cushy suspension that's going to last a very long time. It's not the best system for performance driving. So in the GTO with the BCs I got upgraded struts that go inside the coilover setup and back here I've got the Kony adjustable shocks. Now the way shock adjustment works is Basically, you are increasing how much the shock resists compressing and also how much it resists expanding out again. And the way you do that is by adjusting the valving in it. Now, if you remember from the video I made last year before I went to Road America, after I put all this stuff in, I showed little videos of how I can turn the knob in the back to increase the stiffness, or I can use the Allen wrench in the front to increase the stiffness there. And what you're doing is basically changing the shock valving. There's a valve in here, and by turning that adjuster one way or the other, you move the position of that valve, and you actually force it to compress more or less um, gas inside. So if you push it, if you go to stiffen it up, it's gonna push the valve down, which is going to increase the starting PSI that there is in the shock built up already before you hit a bump. And the more pressure is built up, the faster it's gonna to react to the compression change and also the faster it's gonna to react to the rebound. When a shock compresses, that's called the bound that it absorbs. And when it comes back out, that's the rebound effect. Now, really good shocks, you can adjust the bound and the rebound independent of each other. You can't on these, you can only adjust them both at the same time. Same thing in the front, you can adjust them both, but only with one setting. Now, the only other part of the suspension worth mentioning is the sway bars. Now, what sway bars do is they're basically just a giant rod of metal that goes from one end of the car to the other, and they connect those two ends together. Say this corner is compressing, that bar starts to twist, and when it starts to twist, it starts to transfer some of that load energy across the car to the other side in an effort to resist the body trying to roll. So what it's doing is it's trying to keep the body flat and straight on the suspension. You can upgrade sway bars and make them stiffer to help increase that resistance to that happening. The problem is they're constantly transferring energy and they're never switched off. So if you hit a bump in one corner, the energy of that impact is also gonna be transferred to the other corner of the car and make it worse. 
So you have to decide whether you want a car body that really is going to stay planted and straight and not going to roll around or if you want a com comfortable ride. So on here I've stiffened up the springs, I've stiffened up the shocks, but I have not stiffened up the sway bars. I have put poly bushings in them just to get rid of some of the back and forth play from the cruddy rubber stuff, but I'm not going to put heavier duty sway bars in this thing because doing that is going to make it less comfortable on the road and it's kind of already at the point where I wouldn't want to go any farther because it's definitely firmer than it was, but to go much farther it's not going to be as enjoyable to drive on the road and since I drive this thing on the road so much, I don't want to give that up. So I'm willing to trade off a little bit of uh, body control in the interest of making a car that can drive down the road and still be comfortable. The other thing to keep in mind when you're talking about suspension is how load is maintained by all of the different corners. See, when you make adjustments to a suspension, um, things change based on corners. So let's say, for example, that I decide to lower this corner of the suspension. What that's going to do is actually raise that corner. Now you might think it's going to raise this corner, but that's not how it works. Everything happens across the suspension like this and like this. If you adjust the front suspension and lower it, what that's ultimately going to do is raise the rear suspension without you changing anything if you do it on both corners because you're moving the center of gravity of the car farther forward. See, gravity wants to pull everything down, so whatever is closer to the ground is going to have more of the gravity constant of the weight of the vehicle. So it moves the center of gravity forward. You ever look at old dragsters from the 50s that are called the gassers and you look at them and you notice that the front ends are raised way up high. The reason for that was is because back in the day drag wheels didn't have very good traction so you wanted to get as much weight transferred to the rear of the car when you took off as you could to make those tires bite as hard as they possibly could into the asphalt so you would hook up and get down the road. That's why the front ends were raised up. Today's dragsters have better tires, they don't necessarily need that, but it still matters. So you have to keep that in mind to get everything dialed in. It took me about two nights out here working three hours every night in order to get this thing finally dialed in where the ride height all around was finally where I wanted it making little changes here and there, trying to get it just right. And then once I got the ride height set where I wanted to, then I took it to the alignment shop and had it aligned. It's very important to get your height set where you want it, then get your adjustments made for your camber and your caster and your toe, so everything is nice and dialed in. I hope this video has been informative, I hope you learned something, and I hope it helps you make some more informed decisions when you want to start doing some things to your own car. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to post in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. I hope you've learned something. <laughs> the garage light just kicked off because I've been doing this long enough. I hope you've learned something out of this and I hope you can take it toward making improvements on your own car and uh, making them more fun to drive and uh, a little more edgy for the racetrack. Uh, once again, thanks for watching Josh's Car Corner and I'll see you next time.